Hey guys, Max here and yesterday we saw markets move upwards once more as the rally continued. Investor confidence continued to rise and so we saw some major inflows into the markets and at the same time risk off assets fell off a little bit more. The market consensus regarding interest rate rises for 2022 has officially reached seven and a half rate hikes, which means that at least one of those hikes will need to be 0.5% and that is now priced into the markets. We'll cover all of that and a couple other things along with a second video out later today on stoic politics, looking at the war in Ukraine, what's happening on the ground and what has developed over the last week or so. So check out stoic politics, that channel link as usual down below in the description. So what actually happened in the markets? Well, it was another strong day for US equities in particular. The S&P 500 was up 1.1% and the Nasdaq index was up 1.95% as well. We also saw strong performance for equities in Asia though. The Nikkei was up 3% and the Hang Seng index was up 2.6%. In Europe, things were a little bit less bullish, but still up on the whole. Still not a bad day. The FTSE 100 was up 0.4% and the stock 600 was up 0.8%. Basically, we saw equities all over the place move up and strong markets over the last week continued for yesterday. On a slightly off topic note though, lots of people are seemingly a little bit upset or angry about seeing stocks rise when they are unsure why they weren't invested or why markets are moving upwards at all. They're now wishing that they bought in. Now the reality is here that the fundamentals behind the markets are exactly the same today as they were a week ago when markets were tanking. In fact, the fundamentals actually look slightly worse today. Now, if we take a look at any individual statistic, it hasn't gotten any better at all, yet markets are still booming for some reason. Oil prices are still crazy high, higher right now than they were a week ago. Natural gas prices are still crazy high. Inflation is actually high and it's getting worse. Consumer sentiment is still sitting at rock bottom. Real wages are still falling every single month. Russia is still moving closer to becoming a pariah state with more and more sanctions being levied every day. Hundreds of billions of dollars will be lost as a result of those sanctions levied against Russia. Interest rate rises are still going to come in the future. The Fed is still going to have to sell off their bonds and reduce the size of their balance sheet in the future too. The CCP is still an authoritarian genocidal state with lust for power that repeatedly burns investors. All of these facts are the reasons that I'm personally bearish on the markets and these things aren't getting any better. The fundamentals that back up these markets are still poor. Nonetheless, lots of people are seeing stocks going back up and they're getting FOMO wishing they'd bought back in. Now, very simply, if that's how you feel, if you get upset and you react emotionally to markets, then you probably shouldn't be trying to time the markets and invest actively. If you're bullish for real reasons, then fair enough. But if you're just being swayed by your emotions, investing based on this fear of missing out, you're going to lose money in the long run. This should not be an emotional decision. Investing should be done purely objectively. And if you can't handle that, then maybe you should think about why you're investing like this, because the chances are you'd probably be happier and just less stressed if you invest passively and ignore all of the noise. Certain people like myself are always going to try and time the market and invest in our own way because it's just simply in our nature, but you don't have to go that direction. Now for risk off assets, there has been another flight from safety into risky bets, which means that bond prices fell yesterday again and yields rose. The US 10 year treasury yield rose another nine basis points in just one day. It now sits at 2.38%, the highest in over three years. Really, that is a huge move. That's a very volatile market and it's not healthy at all. Now, the German 10-year yield is sitting at 0.5%, which is far higher than the negative territory it's been used to over the last few years, and the British 10-year yield rose 7 basis points yesterday on its own. Why are bond yields rising? Well, investor confidence has increased. Investors don't think that the Fed is going to kill everything off quite yet, so they're buying into risky assets, equities, things like that, to try and make some money while they still can. Now, gold saw a similar move to bond prices, with the price of gold falling 0.5% to $1,925 an ounce, approaching that $1,900 mark where it will probably settle for a bit. Oil prices are still sitting very high indeed. We saw a very small fall from yesterday, less than 1% though. WTI crude is still at $111 a barrel, and Brent crude is still at $118 a barrel. This is one of those things that is just simply awful for an economy. 95% of businesses will be negatively affected by high oil prices, but people are just forgetting about how high this is because prices peaked at $130, they see 110 as a normal number, 20% from the top, but that is of course wildly wrong and prices are still 40 to 50% higher than they really should be. 
Every product in the world that needs to be transported will get more expensive because of these high prices, every single one. That is going to cause inflation on a huge scale, which will ripple through the economy and hit everything else as well. It's awful news and there's this idea going around about how every time oil prices increase by 100% within a year, there has been a recession, but not every recession has been caused by oil prices rising 100%. Now that's a very worrying idea for us right now, but there is something worth clarifying regarding that because right now oil prices are up 100% over the last year. The problem is we had artificially low oil prices for about a year because of lockdowns and very low demand. We even had negative oil prices for a while. Now if we consider the $40 a barrel mark to be the baseline from where we measure, then prices are already above 100% higher than that, but that price level was from artificially low demand as I just said. It's probably more fair to use the level that we saw over the last six months of between $70 a barrel and $75 or $80 as our baseline, in which case we need to see oil prices rise back up to $140 or higher to guarantee a recession. Now that doesn't mean a recession can't come without that happening, but if that does happen, a recession is basically guaranteed. Obviously, lots of these price hikes are caused by the war in Ukraine, but sanctions from that war are not stopping anytime soon. Biden is due to unveil new sanctions against Russia very soon, as are many other countries, so the price action based on this is by no means over. Finally, in the world of crypto, what happened? Well, there was pretty much no major change. Very small declines or rises from yesterday. Bitcoin is still sitting at about $42,000. Ethereum is still sitting just about $3,000. Altcoins are more volatile, of course, and most seem to be down slightly, 1% or 2% though, so no major moves across the board. Really, I would have expected crypto as a whole to move in line with tech stocks, the Nasdaq, but they didn't and I'm not too sure why. If anyone has any ideas for why tech performed well yesterday but crypto didn't, then leave them in the comments down below. Also, I will be putting out a Stoic Crypto video out soon, so leave any comments for what you might want me to cover in that as well. Finally, it's probably worth mentioning that Britain got new inflation data yesterday and the CPI over here is now sitting at 6.2%, a 30-year high for the country, which is obviously very bad news. Now, the UK has lagged the US a few months regarding inflation. We're basically just three or four months behind where you guys are, but headed in that exact same direction without a doubt. We will certainly see inflation above 8% before the year is over. Bloomberg is actually estimating that it will go above 10%, which is pretty crazy, but not an unreasonable estimate. It's also worth noting that this data, like the US CPI data, does not include oil prices and gas price shocks over the last month, so it's only going to get worse in the short term. Finally, for people who still don't really understand why the markets are going up and why they missed it, I'll link an article from Bloomberg that might shed some light on it all. It basically puts forward an argument for stocks being an inflation hedge. And to be honest, I disagree a lot with what is presumed in the article. But if the market, if investors as a whole agree with that thesis, then the markets will move in that direction regardless of if it's rational or not. At least until these companies start to see their profits, revenues and growth stall due to inflation, it's possible that investors see equities as an inflation hedge. Some companies, of course, are really nice to own during inflation. Really strong brands, for example, companies like Apple. But the vast majority of companies will and always have in the past suffered under huge inflation. Either way, it's an interesting article, so check it out, the link down below as usual. Also, it will be on my Patreon for anyone stuck behind a paywall. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. If you want more content like this, then check out our Patreon and join our community of investors. You get access to our Discord, loads of exclusive content like insight into my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. There's a link in the description to masterworks.io, a site that allows you to buy fractional shares of art from world famous artists like Banksy, which can be a great way to diversify your portfolio with non-market correlated assets. It's completely free to sign up, so if that sounds interesting, then make sure to check it out. There's also a link in the description to BlockFi, which will give you up to $250 in free Bitcoin when you use it. You can also get 9% interest on stable coins like USDC, which is a far higher rate than you get from any savings account these days. Thank you all for the support. Thanks for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.